So part of the huge reason that I moved to the Central Coast was not just everyday church, but was Aaron and Greg's micro church. I encountered family in such a rich and vibrant way, and I would not be who I am today without this micro church. Um, been with them for the last uh, 14 months, and. Uh, it's just been so incredible to see salvations, to see incredible breakthroughs. Um, one of my closest friends, you know, going through cancer and in the middle of that getting saved and we're like knowing that she's going to get healed from cancer and the joy and presence of God on her is so tangible. I just love her so much. And um, so yeah, you can pray and contend for Leslie's healing and total restoration through chemo and radiation. Um, so one uh, interesting thing, um, as Aaron and Greg got married, they decided to um, hand over leadership. I was going to take it over, but as you know, I am doing a million things. So um, Richard Hyde and Peter Neefling uh, took over the leadership and myself and Shay uh, Mendez and Isaac Bartlett, we stepped in as iGroup leaders and relaunched the micro church. And it has been, as they say in Mozambique, mais fogo spiritus santo, like so much fire of the Holy Spirit. And um, I'm just like, so overwhelmed with every single week we hear of healings, salvations, deliverances, like not just from their leadership, but from everyone. We run out of time when we share good news every other week because there's so much incredible things. Every single week we have probably about five brand new people that come um, and we just surrender the time to the Lord. Um, there's been really deep moments and painful moments and really just like joyful, liberating moments. And one thing that we got to do um, at the mid-August is we went to Skid Row as a micro church and it was incredible. Um, I have, this would have been my third time to go to Skid Row and this is a place in Los Angeles where all of the homeless congregate and fill the streets on the sidewalks with uh, makeshift lean-tos, tarped houses, if you will. And there's a lot of ministries that come around and offer food and clothing and showers and um, sometimes they can get shelter. And so for us, we're just coming to love them like Jesus, to sit with them in the urine and the drugs and um, not even being fully clothed. like. We just want to carry his love. And so I uh, got to spend the day praying for people and just allowing myself to be fully surrendered and pour out people's identities that they can't even see and pray for them. I got to see, or I got to lead three people to the Lord and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was incredible. Uh, one of my favorite uh, moments was, it was at the very, very end of like our ministry time, everyone's lining up at the van and I look over and see this lady with tears in her eyes. And as my mom, Carol says, um, when the tears come, pause for the divine draws near and wants to speak through your emotions. And so of course I just sat down with her and said, what's going on? And she said, my father has disowned me. I have messed up too bad. He'll never forgive me and I can't be in the family anymore. And to me, that just sounds like the gospel. <laughs> Like, we are failing, and without his love, we can't come into the family. But it's free, and it's fully given. And so I explained to her her identity. I explained to her about the love of Christ, and she said, that just sounds too good. I'm not deserving of that kind of love, that unconditional love. I, I messed up too much, and I was like, guess what? I'm completely undeserving of that kind of love, too but it's through Jesus' death and resurrection that I can be in right relationship with him and walk in intimacy with the creator of the universe, which is so wonderful. And she just wanted it so bad. She's like, I want that kind of love, even though I don't feel like I'm deserving of it. So she gave her life to the Lord and 
got filled with the Holy Spirit and like her face just lit up. She was just so like so 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 happy. Um, and she'd go into moments of like crying and we met her in the grief and I was able to use like my counseling skills to just help her see like you have some choices you get to make. You really can choose um, to seek to live a godly lifestyle, to let go of addictions, to let go of choices that are leading to a path of destruction. And I'm contending and believing that Teresa's family is going to see her transformation and they're going to welcome her back into her family. Another incredible lady that I got to meet, her name is Phyllis, and um, got to pray for her. I think his name was, I can't remember. Um, I have it written down. But um, so I mainly talked to her. She had been like an electrical or chemical engineer and had a really fancy job and through some murders in her family, it ended up leaving her homeless because of just the turmoil that she went through of her mom and her brother and her sister. And she was a believer and we, we just got to relish in how awesome God is and I got to just pray over her life that it would be restored with greater honor than before and that that acceleration process would happen where her intellect is fully utilized um, for kingdom pur purposes that she can't just get like an apartment she was praying for a house and I was like you're not just gonna get an apartment like we're aiming for a house we're aiming for a beautiful house it will be steps up and up but like the favor of the Lord is going to provide this for you and I got a word of knowledge. Um, I thought it was for her, but I was like apparently looking right next to her. And I was like, were you hit by a car? She was like, I wasn't hit by a car, but he was hit by a car. Um, and so I was like, cool, I'm going to pray. And I just believe God wants to heal you. And, um, you know, they're, we prayed with them like probably five different times. And they're just in tears. And like he couldn't lift his arm higher than this. And then the pain like completely left. And he was just like, I'm here. So I love when I get to see those immediate healings of like fullness right then and there. So yeah, um, during the Iris Leader School, we're going to go down to Skid Row. I believe I'm going on September 22nd and they're also going on the 15th and I'm just <laughs> believing for even more salvations and more healings and more deliverances, resurrections and it's going to be so wonderful. and. Yeah, just continue to pray for our micro church. That is actually like a macro church. We have like about 40 people come every week and 30 to 40, and that's not including everyone that does attend. So yeah, just pray that we can raise up more leaders, have more host homes and people to disciple um, the I groups and just really like get in the nitty gritty of people's lives and uh, love them exactly where they are. And yeah. I'm just so excited for what God has for our micro in this next year. It's going to be incredible.